Hi techies, I hope all are doing well. In this video, I'm going to cover few more Informatica Power Center interview question and answers, which are very important for experienced people who are attending the Informatica interview. So let's start the video. And the questions which I'm going to cover in this uh, session are, what is the difference between normal and bulk loading? How can you increase the performance in joiner transformation? How to call Uniscript from Informatica? What is CTE? Differentiate between reusable transformation and maplet. And what is the execution order of group by where and select in SQL? So let's go to the answers one by one. What is the difference between normal loading and bulk loading in Informatica? In Informatica, we can load the data in two modes one is normal load and another one is bulk mode and in normal load informatica creates logs record by record in database level but in bulk mode it will not create the detailed log this is the reason bulk load is very faster compared to the normal load because there is no detail logging in bulk mode if anything goes wrong if any session has failed in the middle the data cannot be recovered in bulk mode because the detail logging will not be there. But in normal mode, since detail log is created, we can recover the loss of data. The limitations of bulk load are if you use indexes or constraints on the table, you cannot use bulk load. Still, if you want to load data, if, if still we have indexes or constraints on the table. If still you want to load the data, that time you can remove or I mean you can drop or disable those indexes or constraints in pre session SQL. After completion of data load again, you can create or enable the indexes or constraints in the post session SQL. Pre session SQL and post session SQL you can see in the session level properties. So these we can use for uh, execute the SQL commands before loading and after loading, after completion of loading. The next question is how can you increase the performance in joiner transformation? So by performing the joins in a database, we can improve the performance. But this thing, it will not always possible when it's possible means if the source tables, whatever we are going to join, those tables are coming from the same database. This thing is we can able to perform. But whenever the tables which are coming from the different databases or we want to join a table with a file or uh, both sources or files, that time it's not possible to perform the join in a database. So how we can perform a join in a database? We can either create and use a pre-session store procedure to join the tables in a database, or you can use the SQL override query in the source qualifier transformation to perform the join. And if you are using the joiner in the midstream that time at least when uh, when you are joining on sorted data you can improve the joiner performance or suppose if you are using some unsorted joiner transformation whatever the records count i mean fewer fewer rows or fewer records having table that table if you are keeping as a master source so the master source is whatever the table which is having very less number of rows that time you can improve the performance of your joiner or suppose if you are using some sorted joiner transformation that time you have to declare or make it a table as a master 
which is having very fewer duplicate key values that table if you make it as a master source you can improve the performance of the joiner the next one is how to call unix scripts from informatica you can call a unix script from an informatica using command task or pre or post session commands command task we can use it a workflow level or task flow level because this is one of the tasks available in informatica specifically to call the shell script and these uh, th this if you wanna suppose if you wanna call any script at workflow level or task flow level uh, we can use the command task but same thing if you wanna do at session level we can use pre or post session commands normally this pre or post session commands um, we use uh, before start of data load in a session if you wanna perform anything like in cleansing or anything that time this pre-session commands we use uh, in pre-session commands we call any type of uh, shell scripts or we can uh, we can execute any type of uh, uh, shell commands and post session suppose uh, i will say one example after completion of data load uh, files has generated we need to archive uh, source files because uh, if, we, if we are using um day-to-day -day files uh, after completion of processing if you want to archive those files that time if you want to perform if you want to call any script or any command to execute archive that time we use this post session commands so you understood right the difference so if you want to call the any unit script or commands to execute at session level we use pre or post session commands same thing if you want to call any initial scripts unix or python any scripts if you want to call you can use the command task at workflow level or task flow level what is ct ct stands for common table expression ct is a powerful sql construct that helps to simplify queries ct act as a virtual table that are created during the query execution and used by that query after completion of the execution it's just going to delete that virtual table common table expression were introduced in sql to handle the cases where the output of one query is used within another query so for reusability purpose this common table expression were introduced in SQL. CT or temporary named result set that you can reference anywhere in your query. But the before main query only, we need to create this CTE. And that reference we have to use in the main query with assigned name. CTEs are better than subqueries for the structure and the readability of your SQL queries. To improve the readability, we use the CTEs. And also, you know, the structure also we can maintain if you use the CTE. Because if wherever we have subqueries, that time there is a clumsy when we use the subquery many times, multiple times in the same query that time it's just um, like the readability we lost right like where it the query has started and what we are doing sometimes we get confused if the query is complex but with cte we can just with the reference name we can call that result set so there is no need to use the inner queries multiple times we can define cts by adding the with class directly before the select or insert or update or delete or merge statements the with class can include one or more cts separated by commas if you want to create more cts then you can just create with with class 
and separate with comma. A CTE can be specified even for creating the view statement also. The next question is what is the execution order in group by where and select in SQL. This question I got from Novartis interview. They gave an SQL query and they asked this order of execution. In my select query, I have these keywords like group by where and select. So I answer like the order of execution is where group by and select. But if suppose you got another SQL query in that you have some other keywords also like uh, a join um, like order by limit and all these things all these keywords if you have if they they last order of the execution then you have to answer right so i'm giving in which order sql is going to execute the sql query the first one is if you have from keyword then it will execute from and then join and then where and then group by and then having and then select and then it will apply this thing and then order by and then limit this is the order of execution in sql so based on your select query you have to say the order the next question is what is the difference between reusable transformation and maplet Basically, these two objects we use for reusability purpose only, but there is a small difference. I'm going to explain the difference now. So if you want to use a transformation in multiple times in multiple mappings, you will create a reusable transformation. But if you want to use a set of transformations, which are going to make some transformation logic so that logic we wanna use in multiple mappings that time we are going to create maplet the simple if you wanna use a transformation a single transformation in multiple times in multiple mappings we are gonna create a reusable transformation if you wanna use a logic in multiple mappings the same logic if you want to use in multiple mappings that time we are going to create a maplet but maplet contains a set of transformations not a single transformation and how we'll create this reusable transformation and maplet first i'm gonna explain how we create reusable transformation normally when you are creating a mapping designer a mapping sorry when you are creating a mapping in the mapping designer to make some logic normally we'll create a transformation right not a transformation a transformation or set of transformation so that time how it will create first time when you create a transformation when you drag the uh, transformation into mapping designer it just create as a non-reusable transformation but you want to promote that as a reusable transformation you have to check the checkbox of reusable in the transformation properties and the second way is directly you are going to create a transformation in transformation developer these two ways you can create the reusable transformation how we will create a maplet so a maplet we can create in maplet designer and this maplet we can use it in multiple mappings but for reusable transformation and maplet once you created if you want to use in other mappings actually it's going to create an instance for that original transformation or maplet it's just going to create a pointer it's just like an instance for the original 
transformation or maplet for both it's going to work because these two are reusable things so what happens means when you when you create an instance in your mapping suppose if you are doing any changes to the that reusable transformation in transformation developer that time the transformation logic whatever we are going to change that logic is going to reflect to the all the mappings wherever we use that reusable transformation so be careful when you are touching the reusable transformation and also maplet also same thing like wherever we are using a maplet that time it's just going to create an instance for the maplet and if we are doing a changes or i mean if we are doing any change to that maplet in the maplet designer that change is going to reflect in the all mappings so the logic is going to change in all mappings so be, be careful when you are uh, doing any changes to the reusable transformation or any maplet because the the dependent mappings is going to ref, uh, i mean it's going to uh, change the reflections it's going to change in all the mappings